Hey everyone, this is Shannon with Thermaltake, and today we're taking a look at the Core V51 mid-tower chassis. Now, this is a chassis based on our Core series, has a lot of fitment options, so let's dig into this thing and see what it has to offer. Okay, and here you see the Core V51 chassis out of the box. You can see it's a quite large tower, not as big as the V71, but also something that carries along with the Core series is the very large window. Like you saw, even in the Mini Core V1, you still have a large window for what the chassis is. That's because we want you to be able to show off your awesome hardware in it. Now let's take a look starting at the front and what it has to offer. Okay, now starting out on the front panel of the V51, you can see you have your two HD audio ports, your microphone and headset, you have your reset button, your power button, which actually has a blue illuminated halo here that lets you know it's powered on, and your dual super speed USB 3 ports, and then two and a five and a quarter, five and a quarter base for whatever you may need, whether it's a um, DVD, Blu-ray, or even a bay mount water cooling device. Now, let's move past that and see uh, what the cooling is for that's included in this chassis. Okay, as we remove the front panel, the first thing you can see is it's just simple clips. You can just pull the panel off, and it's got a removable dust filter here, so it's easy to clean if you ever need any maintenance over time. And then, as we take a look at the fans, you can see there's two 120 millimeters here, or you can remove those and fit any variation of 120 or 140 based cooling, including radiators in the front panel, and also the top panel, which we'll be taking a look at in a moment. Also in the rear, there is a 120 exhaust fan. So now let's take a look at the top. At the top, we included something really awesome, and this is the magnetic filter mesh. So when you need to clean it, you can just pull it off, sticks into place, you clean it up. But also you can see here, all the different various mounting options. You've got 120, 140 base, and they're all slotted, so no matter what your hole spacing is in your radiator, or whatever fans you want to mount, or depending on whatever cooling solution you want to run, it all can pretty much fit here, depending on what design you're going for with your cooling method you're trying to do. Normally, this is going to be something where it's going to be great for liquid coolers fitting radiator up top and front, or even top, back, and front, however extensive you want to go. Now let's take a dive inside this case and see what it has to offer outside of uh, the standard liquid cooling you see at the top. Okay, now that we're inside the Core V51, you can see by default it has five three and a half inch drive bays with coolest drive trays here. So all you do is snap them in. If you're doing a transport it, we do have the option to install screws in place so that you don't have to worry about possibly the drives breaking free, especially if you're shipping it somewhere. So that's a huge plus. Also, you have your dual five and a quarters here, which all just slide into place and snap in unless you need to screw them in, you have that option as well. And what's really cool about all this is that you can remove all of these. They all unscrew and pull out so that you can fit massive liquid cooling, just like you saw in the V71. It all can fit up here, whether it's radiators, cylinder reservoirs, what have you. And speaking of lots amount of, a large amount of space here, we have the eight PCIe covers here, which allow up to four-way SLI or Crossfire setups or multiple HBA RAID cards, whatnot. You have large cable management pockets, which as you can see, I could stick my hand behind here. There's a lot of cable management space to be had behind there so that you can pretty much tuck away everything you don't need and not have a dry, uh, big you know, drive or cabling mess all within sight here. It just keeps it all out of the view so that you don't have to worry about it. Okay, now we're removing the back panel. And as you can see, it has a indentation. It actually has a recessed area that actually, or a punched out area into the panel that allows for extra cable management space that just goes on top of the fact that you already have a pretty large amount back here but we want to give you that extra space especially for your thicker 24 pins things like that where it's possible that it may end up pushing out on the panel and we've all had that point where we're building a case with a flat panel and you're pushing down on it trying to get the thing closed we want to try to alleviate some of that so it's easier for you also, here's your cable management pockets. You can see, like we had before, this is the back side of them, along with some cable tie downs in various locations so that you can help secure it to the back of the motherboard tray. Also, just like the V71, you have your vertical drive mounts. Let's say you rip out all your drive cages because you want a massive liquid cooling setup. You still have the two vertical mounts here. This is one of the drive trays that were up front you saw a little bit ago. You can just drop it in place here in any of these two locations, and then you have your vertical drive mounting. They're out of sight, so you can have your pretty show system on the front and still have it functional with drives that you don't have to see. And that was the Core V51. As you can see, it may not be the biggest chassis, but it has a lot of potential and a lot of fitment for all different build types. 
from your enthusiast gamer, your extreme water cooling, even your showcase builds can all be done within this single case. So if you'd like to join the discussion for this product or any of the others, you can find our links to our social media channels right down below, along with links to our TT community forums. And thank you for watching.